the wall, CL20s knocking rates. IGI tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarcerated, got my people living dead. Game wars back up back to the hole is where they sent me. Raising this life of crime down the slide. Pray for those better days, devil on my side. Gang life committed, but we dying over signs. Brown skin tatted up, but we wear that shit with pride. 25 to life, cell living up a row. Hit the yard level four, eating spreads out of bowl. Funky going crazy, his appeal going slow. 15 with two strikes, got my time feeling slow. Hey, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get her done. That being said, man, I just want everybody on my subscribers. Everybody that's going to be tuning in, y'all might want to go watch my live, my last live, man. I had a fun time. There was about 102 people attending it, and they roasted the hell out of me. It was crazy. It was fun. I joked about myself. Me and my girl joked with everybody. Everybody clown me. Trust me. Watch the whole thing, and you'll get a laugh out of it. I promise you that. So with that being said, you see the thumbnail. You see what I'm about to talk about. Hell yeah. I'm about to, we're about to make a funny video and steer away from the prison genre for a little bit. Let's get into a prank. So with that being said, hit the subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know if you think I was wrong for this prank. When I was uh when I was younger, my, my mom and my dad, you know, through domestic violence, they separated. My mom started dating this other guy, but this other guy had a baby mama. Yeah, had one of those moms. So that her and my mom were always beefing, trying to squab, trying to meet each other, trying to fight each other, so on and so forth. One night, I went to my, my cousin that I'm always talking about, rest in peace, the 1L1C motto. He was alive at the time. His brother was actually a security guard at the end of swap meet in Solari. We left my mom home because we went to my aunt's house to go watch a movie. While we were there... My cousin decides to say, hey, let's, man, let's, let's prank call your mom real quick. Let's give her a little scare. So when I first, when I, we, okay, I, I agreed to it. I was, I, was, I was a kid, bro. I was in like the third grade. And um, so I call, we call my mom. And she answers the phone. She's like, hello? And I was like, I'm going to suck your blood. And I hung up on her. So they start laughing. They're like, oh, bro, that's not a prank, bro. I, don't, I never asked my mom about that part. She didn't say nothing about that part. My cousin calls her back. This was a trip. My cousin remember what she was wearing that night. And it's funny how this prank worked out. My cousin calls and he says, hey, I'm watching you through the window. I can see what you're doing. She just so happened to be at the kitchen table in the kitchen. And there was a window right there open. And he hangs up, he hangs up on her. And she freaks out. Ten minutes go by. We call her again. And she, I don't know why she decided to answer. She was like, Hello? And he was, uh, we're staring at you through the window. We can see what you're wearing. You're wearing this, you're wearing that. We're going to get you. We click on her again. She's freaking out by now. What made it worse is that my cousin came home after his shift. And he parked the car in front of the, in front of the, in front of the grass where the kitchen window was at. And he was walking across the grass because he needed to move the hose, the water hose. So all she's seen was his head. And he was wearing a nylon to brush his hair back. He was wearing that. So all, and my cousin's dark for when it's nighttime. So all you seen was a shadow walk by the window. So now my mom freaks out bad, runs to the room. She had those old school cops. I don't uh, those old school cop uh, batons. The ones that you, uh, you hold it like this, and it's a little bit of stick out here, and it's long back here. It looks looks like a weird uh, weird L, like P eighty nines or P thirty nines or P eighty something like that with a P. She has one, so she grabs it. My cousin goes to the back. For I don't know what reason to come through the back, my mom turns off all the lights. My cousin walks in, all the lights are off, and my mom runs, runs to him and hits him in the head. Bam! So my cousin dips her. Bam! And he's holding her down. My mom's freaking out, crying. And he's like, Bati, Bati, it's me. What are you doing? And then my mom just breaks down crying. And she goes, man, there was somebody stalking me. They're, they're, they're trying to hurt me. Whoosh. They start crying. My mom starts crying. We didn't call back. We just went up, watched the movie, didn't think nothing was happening at home. Coming back, man, my mom and my cousin called the whole Tulare PD. So when we pull up on the block, we see about four or five cop cars, and you see a bunch of cops with flashlights looking through the side of the houses and different in our neighbors' backyards. Cops got the whole street surrounded. 
And my aunt's like, oh my God, look what you did. My cousin's 16, 17 at the time, out, coming out of high school, and he looks at me and goes, hey, bro, we're going to say it was you, fool, so your mom doesn't get mad, bro. And I'm like, in my head, I'm a little kid, like, freaked out. I'm shocked. So we get out the car, and my aunt was like, man, Bati, what happened? What happened? And my cousin Mondo has an ice pack on his head, and they were just, they were, telling, they were talking to the cops, and my mom was like, somebody was trying to hurt me. Somebody was stalking me. And she's with her boyfriend at the time. It took us a little while, and my aunt and my cousin were like, Bati, that was us. We were just pranking you. And my mom was like, what? And she was smoking a cigarette. I remember she threw it on the ground, and she stood up. And she's yelling, fool, she's crazy. And the cops are cur- the, the, the cops are tripping. And my mom's yelling, trying to calm her down. They tell my mom, look, man, it was your son's idea. Don't get mad at him. It was supposed to be funny. In front of the cops, no hesitation, my mom pulls off her slipper and starts spanking me. Wasn't even my fault. I wasn't even making the phone calls. So she's spanking me. Bad. Cops are letting her. I'm like, man, where's CPS when you need him? Where's the law when you need him, bro? I'm getting beat. Getting beat with a chocla. Cops ain't doing nothing. Then they, well, after my mom was done yelling at me, don't you ever do that to me again. Nah, nah. Like that, crying hysterically. The cops put me in the back of the cop car. Made me wait there for like 10 minutes. Told my mom they were going to teach me a lesson and gave me a big lecture. Said, don't ever do that to your mom again. You need to love and respect your mom. Look what you caused. You got the police department out here. You're wasting valuable resources. All this crazy... Speech. How you gonna give a speech like that to a third grader? And I'm just sitting there like, ah, and I had glasses on at the time. I had big old bifocals, so I was like, ah, and I was crying. Years go by. I think I was, um, I must have been probably like uh, 16, 17, got out of YA, and I was on the streets. So I only, I'd only come home when I knew everybody was asleep. I'd come change some clothes, get a couple, a uh, couple outfits, leave my brother some money, and I'd bounce out. So I'm in my brother's room. I wake him up. I give him 60 bucks because he wanted to get some girls some Valentine's Day flowers and something like that. Mm-hmm. And I hear my mom go to the bathroom and I was like, I'm going to scare her. Mind you, I'm tweaked out. So I don't know why my mom's running like this. So I go past the hallway and I go in her room and I lay on the other side of the bed. My mom's a right hand. So she always sleeps on the right side of the bed. So I'm laying there like, I see the light turn off and I I can just see her silhouette and I can hear her walking towards her side of the bed. So I'm just laying there stiff as a mannequin. I, I feel her lay down next to me. She doesn't even bump into me. And she uh she's gonna she gets comfortable to go to sleep and I just jump on top of her and I put my hands on her mouth and just like shut up, shut up. And my mom just started punching me and scratching me and trying to kick me off, and I can hear her panicking and screaming, but it was the moment I heard her crying. I got up and I was like, mom, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It was me. It was me. And she turned the light on, see me. And she just broke down emotionally. I was like, damn, man, why did I do that? Bro, I shouldn't even have done that. That's sad. I, was, I got sad and I almost started crying. And my mom was like, just get out. Don't come back. Just get out. So she kicked me out the house. I didn't come back for like a week. And then she called me up and said, hey, man, your job left the check here. Uh, Johnny Dormay left the check. I was doing a residential painting at the time. Because I didn't want to go to school. So I come pick up the check. And then she just started yelling at me. Don't you ever do that to me again. Boy, you could have given me a heart attack. You scared me half the day. She gave me a long, long, long lecture. And I was like, all right, chill, relax, chill. I felt so bad that one of my robberies I did, I robbed a store in Poplar at the time. I hit it for like two registers and a safe. And I had plenty of time. It was like five in the morning when I did it. When they opened up the store. And... um. I, we were just chilling, and me and my co-defendants, my, my co-defendant, one of my co-defendants stole a bunch of bags of chips, a bunch of bags of hot Cheetos. And I got the paperwork that says that the bag of Cheetos that they raided at my house, they took them as evidence. I don't know how that was going to convict me, but they, they took the bag of hot Cheetos as evidence. So my other co-defendant, he started pulling out the chicken tenders and chicken strips and um, uh, mojos. He's putting them all in bags, bro, like all this fast, hot food so we could eat afterwards. And I remember calling up my ex-wife at the time and she was up because she knew what we were doing. We were using her car at the time. And she was like, what's up? I was like, hey, um, what kind of cigarettes did my mom smoke? She's like, GPC 100. I was like, and what kind do you smoke? She told me hers. I was like, thank you. I hang up the phone and I just started grab. I grabbed a, a bag and I started putting hella cartons of cigarettes in there. Hella, I mean, I stacked that whole bag up with her cigarettes and my mom's cigarettes. 
I go back to the pad. My ex-wife's up, she's smoking a cigarette, yada, yada, yada. And then she was just nervous and paranoid. And my, I told her, is my mom still asleep? And she's like, yeah. So what I did was to like apologize to my mom. I gave her like four, four, four cartons full of cigarettes. And I left her some money of the robbery. And I just left it right there. And the hot Cheetos, we left them on the um, on the refrigerator. So she never understood why when when they read, when they did the raid at her house, not my house, but at her house, and they took the hot Cheetos for evidence, which I don't even think was the same bag. Anyways, she was wondering why they took the the, the hot Cheetos for evidence, and I told her, I go, yeah, I mean, we had a food, so we ate we ate while she was asleep. We ate a bunch of chicken tenders, some uh some red and bean cheese, uh red and, red and bean burritos from uh, like you would get at a Sierra Mini Mart or something like a gas station. And we left her some food, like some chicken tenders, some mojos, and stuff like that. And then we left. And then she she didn't know where she got where I got the cigarettes from until I was already busting. I told her, I go, yeah, man, I felt bad. So what I did was I, you know, I means I bought you, I got you all those cartons of cigarettes. I mean, but she had cigarettes for about a good. Well, my mom smokes a lot, so she could smoke a pack like in two days. So four cartons of cigarettes. I don't know how many come in a uh, in a carton. But she had a, a sufficient amount of cigarettes for a while, so I kind of hope that you know I was I got back in good graces at the time. I don't know yet because I had went back to I went back to YA for for jumping somebody in crutches. So that's a story for another time though. But yeah, that's how I pranked my mom, and ever since then I, I haven't pranked her. I plan on it though. I really do. I'm, I'm trying to come up with some crafty ideas, but I plan on pranking my mom again. Hopefully, I don't give her a heart attack like last time. But you know, it's a messed up story, sad story. Thought I'd interest you guys with a funny story. Let me know what you guys think. Have you guys ever pranked your mom? And if so, what was the prank like? You might just give me some ideas so I can prank her back because she gets on my nerves a lot, man. So every time I get paid, it's like I got to buy her something because she's always asking me for something. And so I feel like she's taxing me more than the IRS is. But hey, sometimes, you know, a mother's love is never ending. And I think a son should always be obligated and feel the need to always take care of his mom and spoil his mom after raising us and bring us into this world. You got to learn to appreciate your mom because they might not always be here all the time. And there's a lot of people that have lost their mothers that wish they could be there to spoil them. So I do it every chance I get, man. I spoil my mom. Whatever she wants. If I'm going to the store, I call her up, tell her she needs anything, go drop it off to her, so on and so forth. I do my best to take care of my mom. She don't go without. You know, she's asked me for jewelry. I've got her, her school desk. I've got her all her school supplies. I do my best to take care of my mom. And I think it's very important that we should teach the youth because... Oftentimes, a lot of these youth that are out here choosing the street life and choosing the gangbang, they forget that they have a mother at home that loves them and that cares for them, that would rather see them home, that would rather see them in school, would rather see them doing good. But we depreciate that sense of love and that sense of compassion and affection from a mother because we're too busy trying to be who we want to be. We're too busy trying to explore life. And we forget that we forget about the person that gave us life in the first place. And I think that's very important that I need to reiterate to the youth here. So make sure you love your mom, you cherish your mom. If you have a mom, a mom that's in your life, a mom that cares about you, please do so, man. Because, you know, it's going to be unfortunate when I lose my mom, man, because that's my everything. That's my queen. That's my heart right there. And that's my gold. So with that being said, man, I hope I give you guys a crazy laugh. You know, stay tuned for more videos, man. Like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When I got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.